Good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Wow, we've got a lot of people on this morning. That's awesome. I Hopefully, I won't be too distracted by bringing people into the class this morning. If you're new to these classes, my name is Janet. I'm a quantum healing practitioner. And what I do with that is I help take people to the uncharted waters of who they really are for healing, for spiritual awakening, for transformation, personal transformation in their lives. If that sounds like something that you could benefit from or someone that you love could benefit from, then just reach out. I've given you guys a handful of links in the chat box. Um, you're welcome to scroll through those and see if any of those things apply to you. If they don't, that's fine too. <laughs> We're just glad that you're here. Um, <clears throat> a couple item, items of business. This class is being recorded. You can go catch the replay over on my website, which is janetthurga.com forward slash courses. And it's it will be um, a, a part of the year's course, Manifesting Miracles and Healing the Past. Uh, that is what you're purchasing when you purchase that course is all of the replays for the entire year of 2022. So I hope that you take advantage of that and enjoy all of those classes that have been taught up till this date. We will go to the end of the year and then coming in the beginning of 2023, I have a very exciting surprise for all of you. We've been talking quite a bit about spiritual sovereignty and learning how to stand on your own two feet as a human being, as a spiritual being learning how to navigate the waters of this mortal dimension as a sovereign being and also learning how to navigate the the divine because we all have access to it through um natural means we all have our five physical senses but we also have other senses as well and so next year 2023 is going to be all about how to stand in your sovereignty, how to develop that sovereignty, but also how to use the tools of sovereignty to navigate your way through this mortal material plane. I think it's going to be one of the most epic years of class and discussion ever. And as always, you can participate in these classes for free every Tuesday morning, same time, same place. And if you're not getting the emails, please scroll back up through the chat to find out how you can get on the email list. <clears throat> Today, we are going to be talking about how to prepare the fertile soil, how to prepare the ground for you to commune with heaven, for you to, I guess, listen to God's voice. Now, I'm not going to go into specifics as to um, how to actually do that, like how to actually engage in conversation through the veil with the divine. Um, if you want more specifics on how to do that and how to engage in it and me to take you through some guided uh, meditations for that purpose, I highly recommend the class that Anne Fernandez and I just finished. We did it. Uh, it was a two-day workshop. We just completed it Thursday and Friday of last week. That is still available. The replay will be available up until the end of today. So today, after midnight, you won't be able to purchase it at the same price. I, we added so much value into that course. And the course is actually called Pierce the Veil and Awaken the Soul. You can find it on janetthurga.com slash courses. <clears throat> <clears throat> just click the button on janetthurga.com for the courses and it's at the bottom. But if you want to learn the specifics for discerning, um, communing, spirit traveling, all of the using all of the spiritual senses, um, I actually really highly recommend that course. There's a lot of really great tools and resources and content in there for you. Uh, I shared uh, with the group my 12 principles for the awakened soul. I shared um, 12 ways to help you learn how to discern better because, um, you know, you can't just start tapping into the spiritual realm, um, communicating with beings without setting the stage, without properly preparing yourself. 
And so um, that class is specifically for that. After today, it will go to $197. So if you want it for the $97, I highly recommend it. It's packed full of stuff. We're still adding stuff into that um, course, into that members area. And I think that you guys are going to love the content in there. Anne is amazing. And she taught us some really incredible tools. She is a master at channeling. She is a master at meditation. She's been doing and teaching meditation for probably more than 20 years. And because um, I know she's a little bit older than 20, just like me. <clears throat> anyway. So if that is something that you feel like you need, go over there and take care of business. Um, today, we're going to be talking about how you can prepare the fertile soil for listening to God's voice. I feel this is probably, gosh, every time I take a, a, teach a class, I always say, could there be anything more important than this? Well, I don't think there's anything more important than this. Um, learning how to hear the voice of God and also learning how to hear your own divine voice. When you can discern those things, man, you have the upper hand in this world. And so I really don't think there is anything more important than learning to develop these aspects of yourself and you doing it for yourself. No one else can gift you this learning. You have to just practice. So we'll teach you principles. I will share with you experiences and my journey through it. But again, I am not the receptacle of anything absolute for you. So you've got to take initiative and go get your own truth on all of these things that we talk about in here. Um, as we're going through the class, if you guys have comments or questions or stories to share or just something to add to the discussion, I welcome it. So you can either drop it into the comments box, or you can just raise your hand or unmute yourself and, um, and then just feel free to share. Okay, so um, we, my husband and I were talking about this just the other day where we were, we were watching some videos that were online and they were showcasing uh, a very well-respected, well-known, renowned doctor who's been kind of calling out some absurdities in the medical practice and lots of people lots of really good well thought out people follow him and his teachings um but he was kind of contradicting himself and also contradicting other well-known thought leaders in um in health and wellness and so some of us have been sitting here scratching our heads going what is he doing why is he doing that why is he contradicting and again, this is where the tools of discernment really come into play. And you're going to start to realize that on this earth, there is no one. There is not a one soul that's ever going to tell you the perfect, pure, absolute version of the truth. Nobody, not me, not your church leaders, not the government, not your doctor, nobody. So in my mind, I, I do believe that it behooves all of us to learn how to commune with God because God's the only one who's ever going to tell you the truth, the full truth, the unfiltered truth that didn't have to go through a human brain before it came out of a human mouth. Two filters, by the way. Um, so I, that's why I feel like this class is important. And those of you who follow me, you know that I usually have 12 principles <laughs> of something. So I'm going to go through 12 principles today. Feel free to interject if you want to. First principle for preparing the soil for communing with God. Um, actually, I didn't finish that story. So I got to finish the story because this very well-known doctor who's been kind of calling out um, deceit in the world of, um, in the world of uh, the medical model was just kind of found out not too long ago that some of these large pharma, big pharma companies, corporations have been paying him to say some of the things that he's been saying and to appeal to people who are seeking truth. And, um, and but just to lead them off track just a tiny little bit and guide them in a direction that 
elites want him to go. And some of us are, have been going, whoa, what? He's, he's working for the other side? Uh, so, and you're going to find that in most all of society in these times that we live in. Um, just about every system, every government, every uh, group of group-minded people where there is any kind of group think that takes place. It is a natural phenomenon that takes, that takes place in this world when group think starts to happen. Um, it can get out of control real easy and you start to lose elements of truth. The more people that glomp on to what they think is true. And it happens in religion, it happens in government, it happens in education, it, everywhere you can think of. So there's not just one particular group that we have to call out here. There's just, you, you just need to know, especially nowadays, as things are becoming more and more convoluted, you need to know how to discern for yourself and listen for yourself. So principle number one, the doctrine of do more is distracting. The, what do I mean by that? So the doctrine of do more basically is it, there are a lot of paradigms and cultures and societies and groups, you know, that teach these different ideologies on the planet that want you to engage in lots of doing. And I guess the thought process for most people in these systems all across the board are maybe if I do enough, then someday I will be enough. And this is a false narrative because there's nothing that you could possibly do to earn your enoughness. <laughs> you are already enough in your own beingness. And so the remedy isn't more doing. The remedy is being still. The remedy is simplifying your life. So if you brought pens and paper to the class today, I want you to get out your pencils and your papers, and I want you to take a minute to just get centered and grounded. Take a couple of deep breaths and go into your body so that we can put ourselves into a learning state so that you can discern truth for you. Take a few breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth. The goal is to get you to relax. So I want you to find all of the tension that's in your body showing up in your shoulders, in your face, in your jaw, in your neck, in your gut, wherever the tension is, take a few breaths and let that go. On the exhale, drop your shoulders, relax your face, drop your attention and your awareness down into your body. Go deeper, take a few more breaths. On the exhale, I want you to really just focus on release. Focus on softening those muscles. Go deep inside of yourself and ask for spirit to teach you today what you need for you in your life. I'm going to share some principles with you today, but I want you to ask for what you need. So um, principle number one, the doctrine of do more is distracting. It's really hard to hear heaven in your life if you're weighed down by too many responsibilities and too many distractions and too much to doing. So I want you to just kind of think over your life, kind of see if you can third person it. So hovering above yourself for a little bit, looking down at your life and your daily responsibilities and the things that you've taken on. <coughs> um, I want you to look at those things objectively from an external perspective for just a moment, as if you're watching your life in a movie. What are some of the things that you can simplify or maybe even let go of and weed out of your life in order for you to have more time for stillness? And I want you to write those things down on your paper. <clears throat> What can you weed out or not if you can't weed it out because maybe it's connected to your children or something you have stewardship over, how could you simplify? How can you displace responsibility so that it's not all just on your shoulders? And I know that we all do this. 
especially as women. How can I simplify? What can I let go of? Two, step two. You may need to come back to these two because I'm not going to give you a ton of time for writing. So just come back to it, but we're going to go through the steps anyways, or not the steps, but the principles. Principle number two is be conscious of the words that you put out into the universe. This is impactful if you want to communicate with the divine. So what are the words that are coming out of your lips? Do you often say things like, I am tired of this. Oh man, I, you're killing me, right? Or just comments that you make mindlessly. <clears throat> things like, I don't have enough. There's not enough money. There's, I'm not enough. I'm not capable. Maybe those aren't words. Maybe those are just thoughts, but um, think about the phrases that come out of you from time to time and learn to be a little more aware of those because whatever you, whatever comes out of you vibrationally in the form of words, you are making requests to the universe. You are what you put out will obviously return back to you. So be careful of the words that you choose. Make sure that they're positive words. Make sure that they're in the vibratory alignment of what you would like to receive back, not what you don't. So if you talk a lot about getting rid of debt, that's kind of a negative connotation and the focal point is debt. So if you're focused on that um, and you're speaking of that, that's what you're going to attract more of. So instead of saying, I got to get rid of this debt or I choose to get rid of this debt, instead say, um, I am financially free. <clears throat> My needs are all constantly being met. Um, yeah. Step, or I mean not step, but principle number three ask really good questions. We talked about this in uh, the class that Anne and I put on for you guys, uh, that two-day workshop that you can still purchase. Um, we talked a little bit about that asking really good questions. Now, you must ask. You must ask for that which you want. It's not going to just be bestowed upon you. This is a universal law. It's a divine law. Yes, Heather says, my desires are constantly being met. Yes. So if you can get into the practice of speaking that out loud, writing it down often, um, then you can sit back in, in the law of expectation or the law of expectancy and expect that that will come back to you like a boomerang. So there is a law in the universe that truth must always be revealed, always. And so I've always had this question. In fact, I had an experience a couple of weeks ago where I thought I was communicating with my guide, who is Christ. He, he is the one that I choose to, to mentor me. And I thought I was having a conversation with him, but I had not taken the time to fully prepare myself the way I normally do. And I just kind of went into conversation and, um, there was something weird that happened in the conversation. Something happened that seemed out of ordinary. It seemed out of character for the way that I normally um, hear him or see him or experience him. And I was like, that's weird. What's, what is that about? And I, in the moment that I asked, what is that about? Immediately, the, the vision that I was having of him as I was communicating with him changed, it morphed, it shape-shifted into a gross, ugly, demonic being that I thought was the Lord. So we can clearly always be deceived. I mean, deceivers, that's what they do best, is to shape-shift and trick you into believing that you're really talking to the divine, but maybe you aren't. And so it's important that you understand how to get good at your discernment skills. Um, and I, again, I just recommend you go get that, um, that course to help you in those steps if that's what you're looking for. But so don't just ask, uh, yeah, you're welcome for sharing that. It was an interesting experience. The other thing that I think was interesting about that experience is that the minute that I asked, what is going on? Who are you? Um, 
then it had to be revealed. I And I don't know why this has happened to me several times, actually. And so, but I've, what I've observed in it is that <clears throat> demonic or um, deceiving beings who want to shape shift and trick you into um, listening to them or buying in to what they say or show, um, they are bound by laws and they know it. And so when you ask questions like, who are you? What is your purpose? What are you trying to teach? And do you walk in the highest light? And is this God's truth? So when you start asking questions like that, they have to reveal themselves. And um, even godly beings will reveal themselves to you if you ask. Uh, step or principle number four is about you must make the first move. <clears throat> you must act. In other words, here's a here's a great way. <coughs> excuse me. Here's a great way to to um, show, I guess, to demonstrate that. I was again in holy time, having some experience, looking for guidance, looking for direction, and asking God to give me that direction. Asking the Lord for specifics on some things in my life, and what He showed me in the vision was. A picture of myself sitting on a bicycle that was stationary and he was just standing there holding but the the vision was frozen so there was no movement i wasn't going anywhere i was just sitting on the bike and what i heard in my mind was janet you have to choose you have to move you have to be in motion you have to pick something but you got to choose because no one's going to force you into motion so pick a direction that you want to go, that you feel compelled to go or guided to go in and act, act on it, move in that direction. And then I can help you steer, but I can't help you steer if you're inert or is that a word? Yes. Um, God cannot guide a non-moving being. And so um, the, the fullness of agency, a hundred percent of the fullness of agency and free will is on you. God is not the puppet master making your life happen the way that it's happening. It's, it's all on you to um, <clears throat> choose your way through it. And then you'll receive the guidance that you ask for. Principle five, pay attention, pay attention. So again, we talked about speaking out the words, speak out the words in the direction where you want to go ask the questions in the direction where you want to go and keep them in a positive um, positive light instead of a negative light. Instead of focusing on, I want to get out of debt, focus on, I choose financial freedom, I choose abundance. See how that's kind of steered in the direction you want to go. Um, make a request, make a choice, get some momentum going in your life. And then what you do is you wait, you sit back and you wait for the lead to show up. Once you have chosen and you've spoken that out into the universe <clears throat> and you're in the mode of paying attention and you're kind of got some momentum going, now you wait for the lead. Do not do anything until you get a definite lead. As far as do not change your direction, do not um, go in a different direction until you know that you know you've gotten an appropriate guidance or lead. Um, intuition will tell you, it won't necessarily tell you how to do something, but it will point you in the right direction. Does that make sense? So watch for witnesses, feel the impressions, the promptings, the nudges, the hunches, the intuitions that come, and act on those, <clears throat> those are the things that you act upon. And then the more that you do that, the way will come. It'll be presented to you, it'll open up the way for you, um, but you gotta be open-minded because oftentimes when, when, you, when you have this intention for a specific destination, it's almost never plays out the way you think it's gonna play out it will almost always play out in a way that's surprising to you and unexpected to you. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Shauna says, he showed me the same thing, a wheel moving. He said he can't direct me if I'm not moving. Cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you got to be open-minded. Expect that it's not going to play out exactly the way you think it's going to because it almost never does. Because you're not God and you are not the one that has at your fingertips all of the possibilities in the universe. Well, you do, but you just can't see it right now because you're mortal and you're blinded. <clears throat> so um, the highest good usually never unfolds the way you think, but always seek for the highest good. Always ask for the highest good. So you could say things like, um, I choose this experience or this thing in my life or something better. So do you see how that keeps the door, the back end open so that um, the highest will can still play out? Even if you don't get that specific thing or the way that you think you need it, um, the door is still open to receiving something better. So I choose this or something better. Principle six, now you act. Act on what you get. Look for the good fruits. Watch for the good fruits and pay attention. If you step out or misstep, that is not sin. It's just a misstep. You're learning. You're figuring things out and it's okay. So, but look for the fruits as they unfold. Um, and also the fruits, for the most part, are going to be found in your own heart. So watch for what unfolds in your own inner self. Um, Principle seven, you got to test the fruits. So you got to figure out <clears throat> whether these fruits are legit. Um, so testing the fruits, noticing whether or not there's bitterness or judgment or disdain or um, pride in your heart or whether or not you're seeking for these things for your own satisfaction or to puff yourself up. So look for that. Though that's how you're going to discern whether, whether you are um, acting in alignment with good fruits or bad fruits. It's always going to show up in the heart, in the intentions, in the um, ulterior motive, right? So if you're being motivated to be kind, compassionate, loving, giving, serving. If something is motivating you to give and serve somebody else because of love, that's how you know it's a good fruit. It's producing a good fruit. The, the good fruits will almost always lead you to, to give, to serve, to help, to lift, um, based in love, not based in ulterior motive. Because anybody, again, anybody can do nice things. Anybody can participate in the doctrine of do nice and the doctrine of be good. But if there are ulterior motives, in, in other words, pride is driving it or you're seeking to control somebody else the way someone else thinks or sees you, that's not a good fruit. <clears throat> or at least it's a less desirable fruit. We'll say that. Um, giving is a good fruit. So giving opens the door then for receiving, receiving not just abundance, but inspiration and revelation and communication with the divine. <clears throat> so one of the things that I try to do in the, in the area of giving when it comes to abundance and, and if I want to receive something from God or from the divine, um, give send everything that you give out into the world, send it out with a blessing, send it out with love. So if I'm paying bills, I'm going to send that money out into the universe with love and gratitude for hot water and electricity and a roof over my head or whatever it might be. Always send it out with a blessing, always send it out with love. Because what that will do is it will open you up to receiving in that way as well, that which you love. <clears throat> so give all that you all that you have with love. As you act, then be aware of the why 
be aware of the motives, not just in your heart, but try to see if you can discern other people's hearts. Why are they giving? Why are they serving? Is it to look good? Is it to puff themselves up? Um, but most importantly, you've got to focus on discerning your own um, motives, your own intentions, and make sure that they're coming from a pure place so that so that truth can come back to you from a pure source. Okay, eight, give thanks. We talked a little bit about this, putting yourself into that energy that you want to receive from. When you put yourself into a state of gratitude, that's the energy that you're gonna also receive from. It's gonna produce more opportunity to, to feel more grateful. And when you feel grateful, have you ever noticed that your heart is filled with love? It makes you want to go out and serve and give back. back. Getting a little bit of reverb. Hold on. <clears throat> okay. Be in the same kind of energy that you want to return to you. There's this really, um, well, I'm not going to go into that just yet. That's the next principle. But to finish off this one, which is number eight, give thanks. Um, the best way to do it is to let go of judgment, let go of pride, let go of um, seeking to control others, let go of condemning. You've got to search those things out, weed them out in your own heart and let that go. <clears throat> I took you guys through a forgiveness exercise last time we met. So you can go back to the replay of that and go through the forgiveness exercise again and again and again, continually weeding out people that you have bitterness or angst or condemnation towards. I find a really good exercise is before I go to bed at night, I just kind of wander through my life. I close my eyes, wander through my life, and I try to envision all of the people that I don't have good feelings towards or that maybe I feel uh, that they've hurt me or that I'm hurting because of them <clears throat> and then I'm blaming them, right? Go through all of those people and just weed those feelings out. Let yourself feel and let go as you forgive. And one of the best ways to do that is just hand these people over to God. <clears throat> Place them in God's arms and let God take care of them. Let God worry about them. Let God resolve what's going on inside of them. You don't have to do that. You don't have to tether to them through pain anymore. So just release them, let them go, send them free. Just like you release a big bundle of helium balloons out into the universe, just release and let go and send them off with a blessing. Say, I'm handing these over to you, Lord, this person, and I give them to you with love and a blessing. Will you please bless them? <clears throat> it's really powerful and profound. So if you can clear that kind of energy out of your system, it will, number one, it's going to open you up to receiving more pure, unfiltered light and truth. Number two, it's going to open you up to receiving more abundance because the universe wants to... Um, support that. The universe wants to support you to the level of love that you have in your heart. So hopefully that level is pretty high. Principle eight, look to the one true voice. The one true voice is God's voice. It's going to sound a lot like your voice. And and they are going to act in alignment with one another because technically you are one. When you're tapped into your higher being, your higher self, you are one with God. So that is the one true voice. There is this um, popular phenomenon in the world right now to listen to um, <clears throat> psychic readings and astrology and um looking for numbers to, to speak to you. And I'm not saying, or horoscopes and that kind of stuff. I'm not saying that any of those things are bad because they aren't. They're, they're founded in true principles. But the part of the problem is that as these things become more and more popular, a non-grounded, non-sovereign, non-spiritually sovereign being 
will use those things as the one true voice for them. And they won't take the time and the effort and the energy to put in their own um, mental work to exercise their own faith to hear God. So they'll use it as a crutch. That's what I'm asking you to be mindful and careful of. So <clears throat> these kinds of things, if you're leaning too much on astrological things and um, psychic readings and horoscopes and numbers and things like that, and you're using it too much, then it becomes a hindrance to you because it keeps you in the mental plane. It keeps you in the mortal plane where, um, I mean, a lot of that stuff can come through um, karmic energy that isn't necessarily pure. It's not necessarily, there maybe maybe the spiritual beings that are divvying out that information um, aren't pure either. So you definitely you can use those things as resources, but always, always, always return to God to get that one clear and one true voice. Always lean mostly on those things than you do anything else. Okay, number 10, neutralize the, the um, how do I word this? So if someone speaks evil against you or about you or they, they curse you in it, meaning <clears throat> you're never going to amount to anything, you're no good, you're not good at this, you should give up now, like that's a curse. You're putting a curse on someone when you put someone down like that. So neutralize these prophetic um, evils, evil prophecies that are not in alignment with your highest good. Neutralize curses, neutralize negative declarations that go against you and your and God's highest will for you. Um, by saying things like every false prophecy against me will crumble. Um, truth will reign and truth will rise to the surface and the divine will always prosper. Heather says, I use phrases like cancel, clear, or I do not consent. I love that. Those are, those are perfect. So you can write those down in your arsenal of affirmations and words. Words are powerful because they're setting intention and it's preparing the soil for the way you're going to receive and how it's going to be filtered as it comes back to you. So yes, yes, those are great phrases. Thanks, Heather, for that. We talked a little bit about the law of expectancy. And um, it states that you can expect that that which is in alignment with your highest good must come to you as long as you get out of the way, right? So it will come to pass if you stop resisting it and you stop doubting it, but you move into the energy of expecting it to come to you. So move into that energy of the law of expectancy. And that's not always easy to do when you have set an intention and you have chosen a direction and you seek or desire something to change in your life. It's not always easy to do to set that expectation that it will come to you, but you don't even have to set the expectation. You just have to dwell in the energy of expecting that if it's in alignment with the highest will for you, and you've got to figure that out. If it's in alignment, it can't not come to you. It can't not support you. But part of the problem is it's easier for us to go into fear than it is for us to do the work and exercise faith. So what happens is our fear will shut the channels down and shut the flow down. Um, faith is an effort of free will. It's Faith is a motivator of action. It'll get you to move in, in the direction that you're going. And lastly... Oh, the last two. Number 11, principle number 11 in preparing the soil so that you can receive from the divine. All external chaos is in the direct, it's in direct correspondence. All of the external chaos that you see in your world around you 
it's corresponding to inner chaos that's going on within you. So you got to figure out, okay, why is my external world and my physical body and my bank account and my relationships and my uh, abundance, why are these things out of alignment with where I want to go? Well, typically it's because there's something within you that also is out of alignment with where you desire to go. So um, <clears throat> you got to lay those things on the altar, the, the chaos, the noise, the, the problems. Don't focus on the problems. Lay the problem on the altar. Um, it, whatever it is that you're suffering from, even if it's just people that are opposing you, Again, lay them in the arms of God, lay them on the altar, hand them over and just say, will you please receive this for me and transmute it to light? Um, I find the best way to do that, again, is forgiveness. If you can go through the forgiveness process, forgiving yourself, forgiving others, and forgiving all the witnesses, all the people that have witnessed you in that state of internal chaos. So go through the, the phases of forgiveness. Last one. And then I want to open up the mics. I want you guys to share, share stories, share whatever you want. Um, how do you prepare to receive? <clears throat> 12, there is no loss. As an infinite and a divine being, you when you learn how to connect to yourself in the highest way, you start to realize that there is no end to you. You cannot die. You can't run out of time. You can't have anything taken from you because you are everything that you think you need. You are that. Um, and you can't lose anything. So neither can it be taken from you. You can't lose it. You can't run out of it. You can't lack it. Those are um, filters that <clears throat> deceivers seek to put over you, that they're veils. And so um, trust that what you think is going wrong is actually going right. There is no such thing as loss. As an infinite being, again, nothing can threaten infinity. You can't die, you can't run out of time, nothing can be taken, and you can't lose anything. So knowing that, that at your core, you are an infinite divine being, not in, not in the mortal view of yourself, not in the material view, but in the eternal view of yourself. <clears throat> there is no loss. So as one door closes, another door always opens to the divine, to the infinite. This We call this the law of restoration. And so whatever you feel in this world or in this life you have lost or has been taken from you, just know, know that as a divine being, there will come a point in time. <clears throat> you don't get to decide what that point is, but there will come a point of reckoning where restoration will happen and not just restoration because that's not how God works. He will restore to you what was lost and then some. That's, that's the nature, the true nature of how God works. He will restore to you what is lost and then give you more and bless you with more. So that is the law of restoration and it always um, is in effect for you. So be patient. Just know that there is no loss. Things are not, things in your life are not going wrong. There, you are right where you're supposed to be doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing, experiencing exactly what you're supposed to experience, as hard and as difficult and as crappy as it might seem, you're right where you're supposed to be for a specific purpose. <clears throat> but always expect and watch for the law of restoration and restitution to be in effect. If you seek the highest will first. Okay. Um, I wrote out some affirmations for you guys. So let's maybe go into some affirmations. I want you to get centered before we use affirmations. Affirmations should never be used if you're not centered, if you're not grounded, if you're not tapped into your higher self. And also affirmations should always be used 
so that you can find where inside your body you don't buy it. Where are you out of alignment with this truth? Okay, so that's what we're going to look for today. And I also want you to be thinking of ways that you can contribute to the discussion when we open up the mics for everybody to share. <clears throat> for right now, I want you to breathe. Slow down your breathing and slow down your thinking. You can breathe in whatever way is most comfortable and comforting to you. I personally like to go in through the nose and then I slow the exhale way down by puffing up my cheeks. That way I can control the exhale and I can just choose to relax and surrender as I'm letting go, letting go, letting go on that exhale. So when I'm breathing out, I'm looking for tension in my shoulders. I'm looking for tension in my face that I can let go of. Looking for tension in your gut. <clears throat> Inviting those muscles to soften. This is how you open up space for receiving from the divine. There cannot be resistance or you'll be filtered. You'll be veiled by something. You're going to receive the most clear, the most true, the most, with the most clarity and confidence when you are connected to your higher self <clears throat> and you are in a state of non-resistance. So drop down to the base of the spine. Put your awareness inside of your body at the base of the spine. You can also think of being anchored at the base of the spine, but think of your entire center from top to bottom, from the top of your head and even out into the universe to the bottoms of your feet and down into the earth. <clears throat> think about that midline that is in the very center of all things. And just be in the center of you, letting go, letting go of all resistance, being in a state of non-resistance. You may have to really look, like look behind your eyeballs. Is there any tension in the sockets that hold your eyes in? Is there tension in your throat? Can you invite those muscles to relax? As you continue to keep your attention within, on the inside of you, on your center, dropped down to the base of the spine, I want you to listen to these affirmations that I give you, and I want you to notice where in your body are you resisting it? Where don't you buy it? <clears throat> where is it like, uh, nah, that's not true. I don't believe that. <clears throat> okay, here we go. I want you to just notice, you can jot them down on your paper if you like, so that you can come back later and clear those things and just release and surrender. But for now, just notice where are you resisting? Here's some affirmations. Ask and you, and you shall receive. I am grateful for the things I desire. And you could be specific. So you could name something. I am grateful for my new swimming pool. <laughs> I am grateful for um, the resources to support me to take this class I want to take. I am grateful for new friendships, whatever it is. I'm ready for, and speak that out. <clears throat> I gratefully receive a new swimming pool. <laughs> You know what? Last time I did this, I said new shoes. And two or three days later, I got a bag full of 16 pairs of shoes. Most of them were new from a friend who had the same size foot as me, who was cleaning out her closet and had very nice shoes to share. So you never know when these things will come to you. I choose this or something better. So you can list out whatever it is. I choose a new car so that I can get to and from my perfect, awesome job 
or something better. <clears throat> Thank you for my new car. Thank you for my new shoes. Thank you for my, let's see, what would I like to manifest this week? Um, trying to think if there's anything that I have on my, there should always be desires that you have in the back of your mind. Okay, so I'm going to think about, there's a painting that I love and it's called The Listener. And it's a, it's a man sitting in the center of the painting, just meditating and his eyes are closed and there's just faces and voices all pressing in on him. And he's just still. And I love that painting and I want it and I choose it. <clears throat> and I'm ready to receive it and I'm grateful for it. Thank you for my new painting, universe. Okay, so here's some affirmations in the area of acting. I move in the direction of my highest good. Notice where in your body you don't align with that, if there's any resistance, or if you feel light and good and fluffy on that affirmation, good job, you're in alignment. Breathe in, breathe out, continue letting go of tension, letting go, letting go, letting go. Continue moving into that state of non-resistance with your awareness in your center at the base of the spine. Infinite spirit revealed to me the way through to my highest good or fill in the blank to my picture that I want to hang on my wall. <clears throat> Let me know if there's anything I must do. Warn me, show me, reveal to me through divine inspiration if there's anything I need to do to receive it. Don't just ask for this beautiful painting but ask for what is in alignment with your best and highest good. <clears throat> Infinite spirit, open the way for my highest good to be manifest through me. Infinite spirit, if I'm supposed to have this picture on my wall somewhere, I allow the highest good to be manifest through me. All right, let's move on to affirmations that show you divine right order in the situation that you're in. I am always under direct guidance from the divine and I can act quickly and confidently in my guidance. I am always under the direct guidance from the divine and I can always act quickly and confidently in this guidance. Next one. Every deceived plan for my life will fall. I expect that God's highest will will always be done. Every divine idea shall prosper. Every divine idea shall prosper. <clears throat> God's highest will is free to manifest through me according to divine timing. Breathe in, breathe out. Go into non-resistance, let go of any tension, keep breathing, keep your attention at the base of the spine. I really, I'm super curious. This is going to have an effect on your life. It can't not. So will you guys promise me, those of you who are in this class right now, will you promise me that any, if anything comes to fruition and manifests in your life, even if it's a perfect parking spot or a new pair of shoes or something that comes to you, will you um reach out to me and let me know or just you can type it into uh the facebook group you can send us a message you can come back to class the next week and share your wins please please because i i want to i want to keep track of how this is actually going to impact your lives and it will i mean plan on it impacting your life so here we go Think about the thing that you're choosing to manifest again and just say out loud as you drop down into your body. Thanks, you guys. I call upon the law of forgiveness to deliver me from darkness, to deliver me from prison. Breathe in, breathe out. That's a heavy one. Breathe in, breathe out. Let that go. I want you to think about all the people in your life that resist, that deny you, that pull you down, that weigh you down, that hold you back, that you think are holding you back. They're really not. 
<clears throat> I want you to exercise the law of forgiveness by blessing them, releasing them, forgiving them, send them free, send them to the light. And then forgive yourself, bless yourself, release yourself from that heaviness. Ooh, breathe all of that substance, the gunk, the resistance, breathe that out of your body, drop your shoulders, relax in your face, in your gut, <clears throat> in your ribs. We'll go to the next one. I salute the divine in all beings even the beings that I don't like, that bug me. I salute the divine and I invoke the law of forgiveness. <clears throat> so bless them, release them, and salute the divine in them. I salute the divinity in all souls and in every path, especially those who show up on my path. Can I post these affirmations? Yes. <laughs> They're just chicken scratch right now, and I haven't had time to put together a handout for you guys, but um, I'll see what I can do. Yes, I will definitely see, give you these affirmations. Um, breathe into your body, go back inside, go to the base of the spine, connect with your higher self, and let go of resistance. Soften every muscle. Drop those shoulders. Relax your belly. Good. Think tall. One way that you can hold yourself up uh, and not be in tension is to stick your tailbone out. Stick your butt out. So let your butt stick out as far out as it will go. So there's a little bit of curvature in your spine and that will allow you to relax your stomach and your shoulders. And you can just let all of the weight sit on your tailbone, but you gotta stick the tail out. <clears throat> like if you were a monkey, right? Your tail would stick out, your butt would stick out a little bit. Breathe in, breathe out. Course in Miracles, number two, part two, lesson five goes something like this. I am not upset for the reason I think. Yes, that is so true. I love the Course in Miracles. Okay, good. As one door closes, another door opens. I am not upset for the reason I think. So just let it go. I deny loss. I affirm um, revelation, abundance, receiving, growth, love, expansion. I affirm growth, love, expansion. Those are the things I'm affirming within myself. Breathe in, breathe out. Let go of resistance. Notice where it is. Just let it go. Relax and soften. Hold your awareness inside your body. Last one, God will restore all things unto my soul, and I am safe. God will restore all things unto my soul, and I am safe. Okay. Um, I'm going to let you guys unmute your mics and your cameras if you want to, if you want to think about how this class impacted you or affected you or gave you any kind of epiphanies, you're welcome to share while you're coming up with what you want to share. Um, I'm going to share with you an opportunity. Again, if you would like to take this deeper and learn tools for discerning who you're communicating with, who you're connecting with through the veil, if you want to learn the universal laws of awakening and experiencing both spirit and mortality at the same time so that you can not be bound by this mortal prison, but so that you can 
engage with spirit in order to receive more light, more truth, more knowledge, more wisdom, and bring that wisdom back into your daily life and live your life <clears throat> with that wisdom. I highly recommend, um, again, the Pierce the Veil, Awaken the Soul course. It's $97 right now. <coughs> At the end of today, midnight today, that course will be changed from $97 to $197 because we're continuing to add more content to that course. And, um, and it's really, it's an awesome, it was an awesome two day workshop. We had quite a few people participate in it and we had a wonderful experience with these people and learned a lot in that course. I'll be sharing with you guys the 12 principles for um, awakening the soul. I'm also going to be sharing with you 12 things, 12 different things that you can do to learn to better discern who you're talking to <laughs> and what the rules are that they are um, subject to. So that when you know those rules, then you can know how, <clears throat> how to engage in the spirit dimension. Um, a lot of people don't want to engage in the spirit dimension. They think it's not safe because you can get deceived and you can. But um, the other only alternative to not communicating with God and developing a relationship with God through the divine, through these channels, is to be a prisoner to this mortal dimension. That's your other option. And I don't want to be a prisoner to this mortal dimension. I don't want to be subject to what human beings that seek to deceive and betray and manipulate and control and force me. I don't want to be subject to them. I want to know truth from its source. And as I said earlier in the beginning of the class, God is the only one who will tell you the truth. So learn it. Learn to love it. Thanks for being here. Does anybody have anything they want to share? Go ahead and open your mics. <clears throat> if not, we can close. <coughs> this class gave me, this is Pammy, a new perspective on already um, in place desires. Already in place desires. Thank you for sharing and all who share. Love you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing, Pammy. I always appreciate your comments. They're always so full of love and compassion and wisdom. And I, I just love you. Anybody else have anything that they want to ask or share or <sighs> now's your chance. <clears throat> you guys are very quiet today. <laughs> Shauna, go ahead. I was going to go ahead and type this into the chat, but I just wanted to say to you, Janet, how much I appreciate you making these classes available every week. Um, I feel like it has made a difference in my life, not just this class today, but um, <laughs> some of my friends that are on this call also know already that I manifested a new vehicle recently, and it's one that I've wanted for a long, long time. It's a truck, and it fits all six people in our family. And I know that it came about because of divine intervention. Mm -hmm. And it is just so exciting to me. And one thing that has been so helpful to me is being able to come every week and have Oh, I don't know the right words, but I guess to have my frame of mind altered, mm. it makes a huge difference because yeah. I so often get stuck in the muck yes, and I, I used to sit with it for days. And I noticed that those days have been turned into hours and minutes sometimes because of just changing my mind. I don't have to sit with that. So I just wanted to tell you how much I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you so much, Janet. Oh, thank you. That feeds my soul. I mean, that's why I show up here to these classes every Tuesday is because I love engaging with you. I love your feedback. I love all that you guys bring to the table and share with me in return. It's, it's just so enriching and rewarding to be able to have a platform where like-minded human beings can come together and share. So thank you. And thanks for doing your inner work. I do believe 
that that's a big reason why you're noticing the shifts is is because you're you're tapping in tuning in and turning on to your higher self more and more on a weekly basis and that's profound imagine what would happen if you did it every day <clears throat> go ahead carla i was just going to say i feel this beautiful deeper connection with my soul that i haven't felt for a long time and it just feels really nice yeah it does welcome home thank you for sharing that yeah thanks for teaching yeah yeah thank you luana says your classes do make such a difference in my life you help me to do feel and see things in a more spiritual and enlightening way i love you and the growth i'm feeling mm, i love you i love all of you thank you for being on here and, uh, you know, I couldn't do these classes without each and every one of you and your desire to um, engage in connecting to your higher self. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, is that it? Is that all we have? Heather's comment. I missed Heather's comment. How could I miss Heather's comment? Here we go. Heather, I love your comments, by the way. You always have great things to share, so I appreciate you being on here. Uh, I rarely get communication from the divine while in meditation, and it's so frustrating. I do get clear messages and inspiration when I am in a class or conversing or studying with others. Oh, <clears throat> let me scroll down. But I'm hungry for feeling divine connection while in those private, quiet moments that I've created. Good. And I, I hope that you do continue to practice. It is a practice. I hope that you do continue to practice creating those quiet, centered moments. You may find that um, using water might help. I find I have the most incredible um, visions when I'm in the bathtub, just relaxing. My whole body is relaxed and warm, and I can go into those meditations a lot easier than than in other settings so i always make sure that i'm comfortable that i have a quiet place where i'm not going to get interrupted um and are you still oh go ahead pammy okay sorry i didn't mean to interrupt but heather's was that heather who just get, did that comment yeah um that so resonated with me, Heather. I feel the exact same way. And I just wanted to share something that I put in my life uh, that has helped me go deeper. And that is uh, the Sophia Code book and the teachings there that take you so deep personally, just between you and the Ascended Masters. And that has helped me in my my quiet moments just me so i just wanted to share that in case it helped yeah thank you for that i appreciate the resource you've shared that resource before um and i i agree it's it's a magnificent resource if you could also share in the chat where people can go to get that book that would be great <clears throat> Heather says, I feel like I've tried all these things for a long time. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I was really hoping that Ann Fernandez would be still on here. I don't think she's on. I think she had to go teach her, do her meditation that she does. Um, but if anybody else has any other ways that they would recommend for helping to prepare to go into these communications, um, not just meditations, but communications, I will share one that keeps coming to mind is um, when I had that experience just a few weeks ago and I was so, I, I was deceived, I guess, not really deceived, but I noticed a real subtle, slight nuance that um, seemed off to me. So when you pay attention to those things, it can be very helpful. And so when I started, when I asked the question, what are you doing? Yeah, I thought I was talking to the Lord. I really wasn't. I was talking to a deceiving spirit that was shape-shifting as if, and acting and appearing as if he was the Lord in front of me. But I knew that he was saying things and he was showing himself in a way that seemed non-familiar um, to me. <clears throat> so that's why I asked, 
what is going on? What are you doing? Who are you? And, and they have to reveal themselves in those moments. Um, so always be good at recognizing when you should ask questions. The other thing too, to remember is always clear your space before you ever set the intention to step into the divine realm, um, clear your space ahead of time. So I find it helps to cast out. It helps to <clears throat> make declarative statements that I choose to only stand or communicate with those who walk in the highest light of God. If that's not you, you can't be here, right? So just clear your space, set that intention ahead of time, then clean your vessel. You're responsible for the feelings that show up inside of your body. So if you're filled with angst or anxiety or bitterness or discomfort in any way based on something that's going on in your life, you got to resolve that. You've got to come to a place of peace and stillness and quiet first, and then you'll get more clear, confident communication. <clears throat> It'll be a lot less filtered through those veils. Um, Katie says, testimonies build faith. Thank you for sharing. Um, Shauna, thank you, Janet. I love you all. As we all learn and grow, I'm thankful to take away, it's okay to be okay, being still. Yes, not having to always feel like I need to be doing, being more like Mary at the feet of Jesus, not Martha, oh, the overdoer. Wow, thank you for that. That's really beautiful, beautiful way of putting that. <clears throat> um, Pammy says you can go to Amazon to get the Sophia code. Um... Shauna says, what helps me to focus is crystals, eye masks to keep out light, white noise like a fan or a fire or water. Yeah, I do too. I find that too. You can also just go to YouTube and find different frequencies that you can tap into, like 432 hertz or 523 hertz or different. There are various different frequencies you can tap into and just listen to those frequencies and it may help you to get in alignment. Focus intention on third eye and pineal. <clears throat> yes, while you keep a portion of your awareness in your body at the base of the spine. Go ahead, Sarah. <clears throat> hey, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. So um, I have the same problem as Heather, where I think it was Heather, right? Of really wanting to hear the voice of God when I'm on my own. I too get a lot of inspiration in classes like this. Um, and I too am like Janet where I get my best downloads in the tub. But one thing that came to my mind that might be helpful, that has been helpful for me, is to remove the programming that you need an interpreter. Like you need a man or a human to tell you what God is saying. So remove that second party, like visualize um, close your eyes, you know, in your meditation when you're connected to your higher self. And sometimes for me, it just looks like shadow figures to represent like people or a person or trusting in the arm of the flesh and remove them, like picture Christ moving them out of the way. I love Does that. Does that make sense? Yes. I love that so much because sometimes, you know, <clears throat> when we listen and rely too much on one person, um, doesn't matter who it is, whether they're teaching a class or whether they think they know it all, <clears throat> you're still receiving light and truth through a filter. It's through their mental filter and their emotional filter. You don't know what's going on in their mind or in their body or in their heart. And so the only, like I said, again and again and again, the only one who's going to teach, tell you the truth is God. And so by removing those filters or, um, you know, I, I hear the word follow the prophet a lot in my faith community and, and that's fine, but we're not commanded by God to obey any human being. <clears throat> we're commanded to obey the commandments. Well, what are the commandments there? It's guidance given to you by God. Those are the commandments. It's not the 10 commandments. It's not the written words in scripture necessarily, Although that might speak to you from time to time, 
the commandments really is the voice of God spoken to you. And God's not demanding or commanding. He's guiding. And so if you can develop that relationship of trust with God and take his word for it and trust that he's going to guide you in appropriate places, into appropriate places, then that is obedience to the voice and the will of God. And could there be anything more awesome than, than to seek for the highest will for you, the things that are going to fill you with, with the most light and love? <clears throat> Did you have anything else, Sarah? That was a great point, by the way. I really appreciate that. And I think that is a helpful recommendation. I love it. Um, also, just, you know, when you're removing those other people or even the programming of other people in the way also sometimes i am blocking i have <laughs> i have to move myself out of the way that's what it is most of the time actually yeah so yeah. there's that yes. so what you can do what you guys can do for that is drop down out of your brain get out of your mind and go deep into your body someone suggested going into the pineal gland you can do that I actually recommend going down to the base of the spine. It's a connecting point to your higher self and it helps get you out of your brain and drops you down into the deeper intelligence within you, which is at the base of the spine. It's a connecting point to your higher self. So <clears throat> yes, it's one of the better ways to remove those mental filters and emotional filters that your mortal body and your mortal mind, your monkey mind will sometimes put over you. So great, great suggestions. Thank you, everybody. All right. Well, I think that that is good for today. We've are already taken you 15, 17 minutes over the hour. I appreciate you guys being here. Again, if you feel like these classes are benefiting you, um, Try not to keep it to yourself. Feel free to share with others. Recommend that others join as well. If they want to get access to the live Zoom links directly emailed to them, they can just go to janetthurgood.com. And that's one of the better ways to share. You can also share on Facebook. Go over to my, my Facebook wall and you can find all of the invites to all of the classes there. You can also find them in the group Greater Life, Greater Impact. If you're not a part of that group already, go over there. And if you'd like to be added to our group chat, um, we're going to be moving our group chat over to Telegram. <clears throat> it's a lot easier of a place to connect, and they don't put restrictions on how many can be in there. So if you would like access to our Telegram group chat, then uh, reach out to me on Facebook and let me know. Um, I'm going to be putting up a post about that later on today. So watch for my post on Facebook if you want to be added to the group chat where we can all continue this discussion. And thanks for being here, you guys. I really appreciate it. All right. Have a blessed and beautiful rest of the day. Don't forget to go pick up your copy of Pierce the Veil and Awaken the Soul for $97 before the price goes up. All right. Take care, everybody. Mwah. Bye.